Okay, hey, thanks a lot for checking in with me again. Hey, I was just asked a question, and I'm going to go ahead and put this on the video because I think it's important for everyone to know this. Um, so I have someone asking the question today, gee, what if someone has a net worth of $15 million, and conversely, if they have a net worth of $25 million, how much liability insurance, personal liability insurance, should that person have? So, so typically, uh, I, I would start with an average business owner that owns a business and say, okay, you have this risk, and, and how much, what is your potential loss, and we try to figure it out. Um, to answer that question, I'd like to ask another question. Um, what if you ran into somebody that's 35 years old, earning just $30,000 a year, and you, 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 you do disable them? They're, they've become paralyzed, light accident, barely nicked your car, but just the way it hit them, it hurt that person and they can't work anymore. 30000 a year for 30 years is 900000 in just loss of income, right? Now we get to reduce that to the current value of a future payments because we're going to make yearly payments to that person to replace it, so we'll discount it. We also got to inflate it for inflation and job things. Plus we got pain and suffering, loss of mobility. What do you think that, that one person being injured is worth? Do you think a million dollars or would three, four, five, six million dollars be more in line? Probably five, six million dollars is more in line. I always ask my clients this though, what's the most important thing to that person in the moment that they're injured? If they're a family person, um, maintaining the family house, keeping the children in school, uh, maintaining the lifestyle of the family, and then having enough money to continue on. Because because here's the one thing I have to say, you can never ever buy enough insurance to pay for all possible things. As an example, let's say we had a $25 million umbrella for a person with net worth of $25 million, and they run, they get drunk one night, and um, there's a school bus crossing with 20 kids in the school bus crossing, and they just plow them over. What do you think that's gonna cost? It's going to be more than $25 million, I, I will tell you that. Um, so even a $25 million umbrella is inadequate based on that risk. So part of the answer is not insurance, believe it or not. Part of the answer has to be better planning of the person's wealth. Things like family limited partnerships, limited liability companies, oh yeah, for your investments and things like that. In other words, most people that that question is being asked to me of, they have personal net worth of this much, but how are they managing that net worth? I have clients that have 30, 40, 50, I'm thinking of one with almost 300 single family homes as rental units. Depending on how they manage that, if they're managing and owning that individually, they risk their entire fortune on that. If they hunk it down into several LLCs, maybe 10 at a piece, they got 30 LLCs. Yeah, that cost them a little bit of money to do that. But with 30 LLCs, the most they could lose is 10 houses in that LLC at once for those larger lawsuits. What about a family limited partnership? You know, the limited partnership, it has some estate planning help. It allows you to train your children, but also there is some asset protection. What about a corporation? Asset protection. So the simple answer is um, how much liability somebody needs. You need enough liability for that person or group of people that you've injured to minimally maintain their lifestyle and pay for some of their pain and suffering and lack of mobility and things like that. Because here's the deal, the bird in the hand were two in the bush, right? A bird in hand means I need $3 million today to pay off my house, pay off my cars, get my kids through college and maintain our lifestyle and have a little extra money to travel and pay me for my pain and suffering. My injury is worth $10 million. So, but the insurance company will settle today for $3 million, or I can go to court 18, 24 months in appeals, and then I gotta cash out the person, and I might be able to get my $6 million by you know, taking the person's profit sharing and such like that, and their 401Ks and all those things. But that's 18 to 24 months down the road. In that period of time, the person's gonna lose their house, disrupt their family and things. So the answer is, Unfortunately, you got to have enough insurance to pay somebody so they can maintain their dignity and their lifestyle, and you can feel morally correct, where you can actually stop and say, boy, I'm sorry I hurt this person, and not be afraid to say that, because if you say that, they're going to sue you more. 
Now, I know that's not good legal advice. I, I get it. I'm not an attorney. I'm just a person. But, you know, really, I'm not talking about the guy with the neck brace. I mean, you've disabled somebody, maybe the head of a household, maybe a group of people. Um, they deserve to be compensated, just like you would want to be compensated. So I also tell people, let's pick someone with $25 million net worth. And I say, okay, you're living in a neighborhood. What if one of your neighbors hits you and you can no longer work or they kill you? How much money does your family need from that person? Guess what? You're in the neighborhood together. They're going to need the same if you run into them. That's another good rule of thumb. The other thing is there's nothing wrong with going one and a half times or two times net worth. You're worth $10 million, 15 to $20 million umbrella. On top of everything, we'll take care of it, usually. But again, remember, the premise is you can never have enough liability insurance for all possible things. You can only have enough liability insurance to make somebody whole enough to want to leave you alone because you could do that quickly and then they leave you alone for the rest of it. And also, you got to have some planning. You can't just show up owning everything personally. It, it's, it's just the... A huge mistake. Also, people with that kind of net worth, you know, let's pick on the guy that has 300 individual rentals. You know, that's not personal stuff. You know, a personal investor has one or two rental houses. This is a business renter. They need to function as a business, be coordinated as a business. 300 rental units, you're running a business. You need, you need business insurance, just like you would. You need good corporations. You need LLCs, family limited partnerships. Those are more important, actually, than the amount of insurance you have. Ways to, to a LLC allows you to detach a digit without losing your whole hand, right? Um, making sure you have good forms of that. More times than not, and as a matter of fact, 99% of the time, and this is after 30 years I'm saying this, 99% of the time, no kidding, I, I, I think most of the time when I meet with a client of wealth or a business owner, they don't have adequate planning. They don't have the names correct. Like they may set up uh, Grant Davis LLC owns this group of building, but we've insured it under the Grant Davis insurance policy without even mentioning my LLC. So I've got no insurable interest in it or my corporation because I've created a new entity. They have the insurable interest, not me. I, I find the named insureds are wrong. Limited partnerships are really scary. and No one ever gets those right. I mean, we do because we'll tie it all out, but that's scary. Family limited partnerships. Living trusts, they don't provide any asset protection. You need a corporation with a family limited partnership. The way I would stack it, family limited partnership owns the corporation. The corporation owns the LLCs where you break things down into digits. Yeah, you don't want to lose your finger, but it's better to lose your finger than your hand. So the LLCs are like fingers. Your hand is the corporation. The arm is your family limited partnership. The body is you individually. So ideally, you lose a digit or part of a digit. You might lose a hand. If you lose the arm, we're in trouble, but you didn't. You protected the body, if that makes sense to you. So um, adequate limits are important, very inexpensive. A $25 million umbrella is nothing to somebody whose net worth is $25 million. Conversely, a $5 million umbrella costs $600 or so a year for someone that's worth 2 to $3 million net worth. It's not very much, but again, I want to emphasize and repeat myself more important than the umbrella question I just got is good planning. Make sure you, you have good planning and you've done things right. And if you've got business activities, insure them as such. Get the right kind of coverage, the right named insureds, and the right planning. Give us a call or call your GDI broker. We know what we're doing. We know how to do this. We're happy to work with your CPAs and your attorney, your legal counsel. We're very good at this, and we're happy to talk with them and make sure that you're protected properly. Thank you so much.